Вот он! Вот, бля, горячь! Никит, прямо от тебя возле дома! July 24th, 2025, exactly at 0025. Ukraine sent a fleet of PD-1 drones to Krasnodar, Krai, and Sochi in the middle of the night. We are talking about 39 UAVs. The PD-1s among these UAVs virtually destroyed Russia's most strategic oil facility in Sochi, Lukoil. These drones have a range of 500 kilometers and can stay airborne for 10 hours. The target is an oil facility in Sochi, the size of one and a half football fields. Ukrainian forces appear to have chosen an excellent drone type for this operation. This is because the S-400s, considered Russia's best air defense system, were also present in the flight path and radar range of the PD-1 drones. The interesting part begins here. Despite the deployment of the S-400s, one of the best air defense systems in the region, no Russian radar operator noticed the situation as the PD-1s flew toward the Lukoil facility because they were focused on two old Tu-141 Strigi aircraft with wave-like landing gear. In other words, Ukraine had inadvertently diverted the target. And instead of focusing on the PD-1s heading toward the Lukoil oil facility, the Russians left the S-400 radars locked onto the Tu-141s. The PD-1 platform was specifically chosen to exploit this gap because its composite fuselage with a wingspan of 3.4 meters was produced using high pressure injection molding. It was both lightweight and had radar cross section that was one tenth that of magnesium alloy. In other words, the Ukrainians had tried to reduce the radar detection cross section as much as possible to reach Sochi with the PD ones. Additionally, the pusher type Rotax 912 engine installed in the wing's internal compartment kept the hot exhaust above the fuselage line in the lateral section. As a result, even the highly sensitive IRST sensors of the S-400's 92N6E radar couldn't detect the sharp heat signature emitted by the PD-1. Moreover, the block version of the PD-1 selected for this operation could transmit real-time 720p video thanks to the FPV link upgrade introduced by Kiev-based Ukerspec systems in March. Here we can see that the Ukrainians were able to gather significant visual data about the route and location of the targeted oil facility. With all these features at their disposal, the PD-1 drone operators did everything they could. It is likely that the drone operators were able to switch to joystick control mode instead of a waypoint, enabling the drone to perform a kamikaze dive on the target. All electronic components, except for the motor tail balance, were produced on a Polish-made microcontroller assembly line. After assembly, each PD-1 carried a warhead shaped like a casing filled with half a kilogram of C4 and 6.5 kilograms of aluminum ammonium nitrate. A single PD-1 impact might not have been enough to cause a highly lethal attack. However, Ukraine had considered this and opted to attack Sochi with eight PD-1 drones. The total cost of a single drone did not exceed $95,000. In contrast, the list price of the S-400 Triumph battery stationed along the Sochi coast was $550 million. The situation was also in Ukraine's favor in terms of unit cost. And of course, this S-400 battery had been fully activated when the attack began at night. However, the Russian Defense Command, which relied on the S-400, had overlooked a critical detail. The Triumph algorithm's radar-based threat threshold table likely classified targets below the 3-square-meter EPR threshold as bird flocks. The system only checked the infrared spectrum and raised the alarm once the target entered the 15-kilometer range. The PD-1's cross-section of 0.04 square meters was far below this threshold. Moreover, Ukrainian electronic warfare teams had flooded the L-band region with dense noise using Carpat-M transmitters carried by two 141 decoys. They had also overwhelmed the 92N6E's filter table with unnecessary data. The operation reached its peak at this point, all preparations had been made, and the PD-1 drones had already taken off. Taking advantage of the S-400's vulnerability, the first eight PD-1s quickly managed to enter the airspace above Sochi. When the team leader saw the beacons rising from the coastal towers through the drone's camera, he entered the Phantom 1 code into the flight computer. The eight vehicles entered a sequential spiral dive at an altitude of 300 meters, and the Rotax engines were shut down. As the propellers spun freely due to friction, the fuselage began its descent at a 20-degree angle from the nose. The first four drones struck the red and white silos on the western side of the barrel storage area at the Lukoil oil facility in the town of Sirius. The C4's sharp pressure cone pierced the silo's steel plate. When the hot aluminum-ammonium mixture came into contact with crude oil, an explosive layer spread. Within 10 seconds, 
four separate columns of flame engulfed the area in light, and the explosion shockwave, with a pressure of 2.1 times the direct reflection, shattered the office partitions. Flames began rising from all directions. One of the second wave of drones landed on the roof of the oil facility's pump station. There, an 8-megawatt diesel generator exploded, causing the station's entire fire suppression system to lose pressure. Just one minute later, another PD-1 swarm, guided by radio frequency, continued its horizontal flight toward Apsharansk. These drones were tracking along the road, staying within 120 meters to avoid being detected by the Russian S-300 PS Batteries Battalion Search Radar, the 36D6. Upon reaching this secondary target, the 50,000-ton raw mixture silo inside one of the tank farms at Lukoil's Astash site was not pressurized with inert gas during maintenance. In other words, the vapor mixture was ready to explode. PD-1 number 14 pierced the center of the roof, and the warhead detonated with an 80 millisecond delay. The flames engulfed the two-story storage facility. The explosion was heard by passengers boarding buses on the northern runway at Sochi Airport. Tower personnel initially mistook the explosion for military exercises at a firing range, delaying notification to civilians. However, minutes later, fuel vapor rose from the roof vent in the form of a fireball, reaching the orange sky, and the terminal windows were engulfed in reflected flames. The Sochi Air Traffic Control activated ICAO emergency procedures in response to this scene. As a result, all incoming flight approaches were placed on hold, and outgoing slots were frozen during the night. When the official report was leaked during the day, it revealed that 97 flights had been delayed and the airport had been closed for four hours. The delay was not caused solely by smoke but also by a PD-1 shockwave that spread over a radius of 5 to 6 kilometers on the runway. This was because the third drone cell had completed its primary mission but had not yet been recalled, so it was loitering on its autopilot trajectory. Since not all radar operators could detect these, the risk bubble was kept large. After the Ukrainians used PD-1 drones so effectively to strike the Lukoil facilities in Sochi, PD-1s came to the forefront. The PD-1 standard Rotax engine, powered by petroleum fuel, delivers 75 horsepower and a cruising speed of 95 kilometers per hour, with a maximum range of up to 1,000 kilometers. The drone's 1-meter diameter directional patch antennas were connected to a Starlink phased array relay. The PD-1s received 256-bit AES encrypted data streams through this LORA-based bridge. The station commander's joystick on the ship had a video stream latency of less than 900 milliseconds allowing a pilot to make instant maneuvers. This was the primary reason PD-1 was chosen over expensive cruise missiles. Losing a one-way drone costing $95,000 was more reasonable than risking a Neptune worth $2 million. In contrast, a single 40N6E of the Triumph S-400 interceptor missile cost $3.5 million. The 92N6E radar cabin mounted on the battery cost $40 million, and the 91N6E search antenna was highly valuable. Thus, the total cost of eight PD-1s was less than half the cost of a single missile from a Triumph battery. And yet the battery couldn't hit any of them, as the radar lobe jamming prevented it from even detecting the first ping. Among the unsung heroes of this operation, which caused a major stir in Sochi, was the tiny BOA ECM module adapted to the PD-1's lightweight composite wing. This module generates narrow band noise at frequencies between 2.4 and 3.7 GHz, increasing the power density at the radar's peak by only 1.2 dB milliwatts. However, by injecting interference into the 92N6E's narrow hopping channels at 300 microsecond intervals, it rendered the radar's Doppler detection algorithm inoperable. As a result, operators saw flickering white dots on their screens and reported them as squirrel birds. Even this module, which cost $12,000 per unit in Kiev, was enough to overwhelm the expensive Triumph circuit. Russia's S-400 air defense systems also became a major topic of discussion following the recent attack in Sochi, but in a negative sense. Now, it is necessary to examine the S-400's capabilities on paper. The 40N6E missile reaches Mach 14 at a range of 400 kilometers, has an active AESA radar seeker, and theoretically can detect a 0.02 square meter RCS target at 75 kilometers. However, in practice, it requires inertial Doppler correction for nose data, and if background noise is high, lock-on is delayed. This is exactly what happened in the attack on the oil facility in Sochi. The PD-1's radar cross-section was 0.04, comparable to that of a Taifun-class cruiser radar. Additionally, the epoxy carbon body absorbs radio waves, with metal only present in the engine block. 
When the engine is mounted at the rear, there are no metal reflections on the front profile, causing the radar to mistake it for a bird and discard the data. The real disappointment for the S-400 was not that it couldn't hit the aircraft, but that it couldn't even fire the missile. The Triumph battery is considered modern, but it requires human-guided surveillance against a swarm of drones. The operators here fell for the bait, and the real threat slipped through the net. Of course, there were other dimensions to the consequences of this attack, which was launched by PD-1 drones and struck the most strategic oil facility in Sochi. Sochi was the face of the 2014 Olympics. And the government, which saw the region as a tourist showcase, was relying on a civilian casualty shield. But the PD-1 drones arrived with low noise and struck the city like belt-firing cruise missiles. Firefighters arriving at the scene at dawn were unable to cool more than 200 tons of fuel for hours. And when the horizontal flames reached 80 meters and the smoke column rose to 1,200 meters, the flight ban was extended. The operation is considered the second major blow to Russia's energy logistics backbone. The first occurred in May when the Oost Luga refinery was struck by a Jaren II copy. The positive aspect of the Sochi attack was that it coincided with the tourist season, with burning tanks shown on television alongside palm tree silhouettes. As night fell and the fire weakened, PD-1 operators in Kiev were still receiving live footage. A special spectrometry module measured the barium chloride levels in the smoke, calculated how much fuel remained in the tanks, and collected data for potential secondary operations. Even single-use kamikaze drones had become data mines. This is another face of modern warfare. Every fireball generates a data table, and that table becomes ammunition for the next algorithm. During the airstrike operation in Sochi, the Black Sea coast breathed in the smell of diesel fuel instead of fog at dawn. A country couldn't supply diesel to the market despite having the world's most expensive S-400 shield. These days, they must be cleaning the PD-1 wings in Kiev's planning room and drawing the next range. For in the coming days, perhaps the Ural depots, perhaps the Samara refinery, may become targets for the Ukrainian army. For a carbon-winged ghost lurking in the shadows can bid farewell to shields worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Thank you for watching.